traditionally dressmakers were essentially servants to the wealthy and manufacturers were businessmen so they could make a lot of money but they weren't very prestigious characters. So it took a long time for the designer to emerge out of the shadows of business and service to become a superstar. Halston's a perfect example because he famously said, you're only as good as the people you dress. But he was at least as much of a star as his clients. He might go out with Liza Minnelli and Andy Warhol, but he was another celebrity. And this really marks an important change in the life of fashion designers and the world of fashion. Probably the word for the 60s is youthquake. Youth is really the theme of 60s fashion, and it completely transforms fashion. And America is right quickly in line to move into the new styles. So not only are there young designers like Betsy Johnson, who are very much a part of that whole rock and roll 60s scene, but even older designers like Norell move with the times and transform their glamorous but more old-fashioned styles into something that's really current and youthful. And that involved a lot of body exposure. So the miniskirt is the prime female fashion statement of the 1960s. And you have someone like Norman Norell, the dean of American fashion, known for those amazing, long, glamorous mermaid dresses. In the 1960s, he takes that same kind of glamorous sequence, but he does it in a wild pop art pattern, very Andy Warhol, and he does it on a micro mini dress with little spaghetti straps. So this kind of epitomizes the transformation of fashion in the 60s, that it's all about the body. It's about beautiful young bodies and having fun. If the 60s had a youth style, in the 70s, it's a reaction against all kinds of fashion that came before. And you have something like this Giorgio San Angelo, which is a really wonderful gypsy-inspired dress that captures that whole anti-fashion hippie feeling. If you move from the hippie anti-fashion of San Angelo's fantastic dress to the kind of minimal chic of someone like Halston, who was also a really pivotal player in the 1970s. You have someone who's now moving away from all of the fashions and different styles, the youth cults and rock and roll, towards a very streamlined, minimalist, urban elegance. Whether it's in hammered satin, or in cashmere, or in ultra suede, it's a look which is very, very sleek and simple, but also very, very sexy. And it's deceptively simple. Money, greed, what were the 80s all about? In fashion, I think the look is success. In the 80s, women have not only moved into the workforce, but they're rapidly rising. And as a result, they have much greater confidence about how they can look successful and yet also individual and feminine. Moving from the menswear-inspired Bill Blass pantsuit in 79 into the 1980s, as women continue to make great strides forward, you have something like this Donna Karen dress from the 80s, which epitomizes the new confident femininity. The idea of being successful, yes, success is a theme in the 80s, but also being feminine and confident. And it also, of course, marks the renewed importance of black in fashion, which begins in the 80s and sweeps through the fashion world. The 90s are all about the body. So everyone's in shape. Fashion's still something that they enjoy and that's important, but it's no longer in any way a fashion that covers up. On the contrary, it's a fashion that reveals the body. So you have things like this wonderful Calvin Klein slip dress, which brings the glamour of underwear as outerwear, but not in that structured bustier way. Instead, in a very easy, flowing slip dress effect, a beautiful silver lace. If you look at something like this Jeffrey Bean evening dress, this is in every way a work of art, on a par with the greatest couture coming out of Paris. So you have something like this. It's cut with surgical precision by 
a real genius of fashion. If the word genius means anything, then it certainly applies to Jeffrey Bean. American fashion is about ease, so that you associate elegance perhaps with Paris, but a kind of easy elegance with American fashion. It's known for the whole sportswear tradition, not only active sportswear, but the kind of clothes for living in, clothes for real people, and very much a sense of adventure moving towards the kind of clothes that people want to be able to live their whole lives in. But I think that we're still looking towards the future when it will be onward and upward with even more exciting fashion.